Hello everybody, welcome to Tokyo. That down there is Monza Nakacho. And believe it or not, this is a famous place to come and watch the cherry blossoms here in Tokyo. You can see the banners are out for the sakura, it says right there. But these are the trees, and there's not a sakura blossom on any of them. So we're gonna go take a look at them, but not to worry, I did get a bag from Mr. Donuts of Sakura Mochi Donuts, which is uh, their special for the moment. How you doing, everybody? It is freezing. I think maybe it's because I'm just kind of wet. I've been rained on. I do have an umbrella, but it's so much easier uh, to keep it off while I'm doing a live stream. Um, look, I, I don't know what to tell you. That This has been a very odd year. The winter was a little bit colder. Although they say it was the warmest winter in a long time, the last few weeks, in particular the last month, have been really cold, including snow in a lot of areas of Tokyo. Uh, sorry, a lot of areas of Japan. Tokyo has been just chilled. Apparently the blossoms are out in Kochi down in Shikoku, but you can see in the Some Yoshino, not, not a peep. Look at that. That's an update live from Tokyo's Monzen Nakacho, the central area, just about, uh, uh, I don't know, it's about eight minutes by taxi to get to Tokyo Station, so that's how close we are on one of the canals that are connecting up with the Sumida River. You can see the lanterns, the Chochin are out, they light it up at night. It's a beautiful little area to come and visit for the cherry blossoms, but not, not a one. It's weird, it's weird. So I brought my own bag of donuts here. So actually, why don't we, why don't we talk about this a little bit right now? This time of year is very interesting because we do get a bunch of um, uh, Sakura Cherry Blossom confections. This one is, there's something going on down there. This one is Sakura Mochi. Sakura Mochi, you can see my, my fingers are still somewhat dyed from the indigo um, uh, dyeing uh, Aizome a couple of days ago. Uh, this has Kinako roasted soybean powder and I'm guessing that floral sweet taste of uh, sakura uh, combined with uh, mochi. Itadakimasu. Oh yeah. You can definitely see the cherry blossoms on the inside there. Oh, that's nice. The rain's making it out of focus there for you. It's pretty nice. It's got a, that floral, salty, sweet floral cherry blossom taste. Cherry blossoms, um, they're pickled. So they are gonna be a little bit saltier uh, than you would expect, but it's really good. Mmm. Wow. I got two of them, one for Kanai. Put on my bag down here. All right. We're the only ones here. <laughs> so let's go check it out. This is the Oyokogawa. I like the sign right there. O, O, O. So when they put an O over the O, usually it's O or O. This one is an Oyokogawa. And they do have canal trips that go uh, uh, through. This is such a beautiful area. You can see there's a, they have posters for it. The Fukugawa, which is a deep river, the main river here. This used to be the way you got around during the Edo period uh, 150, 200 years ago. And they have these uh, to tours. I'll put the poster here so you can get a look at it. It started, it started, um, it started like a couple of weeks, you know, about, 10, about 10 days ago. But you can see, I don't know, I guess we all thought that the blossoms were going to be coming early. But that's why they do like 9, 10, 11, 12 different forecasts for the cherry blossoms. So everybody who's coming and made their arrangements, their hotels, trying to predict Mother Nature, you're going to be somewhat disappointed at the moment. But you'll eventually catch them. They catch up. They move quick when they want to. But it is nature. And nature moves at its own pace. But you know what? There is The promising thing is that we finally have buds here. Do you see that? The green buds are on there. That means it's about four days away. Four days away. That stinks. 
like I'm into it right now. That means we're going to get into April. So they're probably going to be in Tokyo until about April 10th, the Some Yoshino, which is good news for those that weren't planning on, uh, were, were planning on coming later on. But for those that are coming, uh, you know, in the beginning, the middle of March till the beginning of April, maybe not so good news for you. Christian is here. Thank you. Plums are pickled to preserve them. Yeah, the, the, um, there's a, a pleasant saltiness to it. Sometimes it's still too salty. Depends on who's pickling them. But it's the, uh, not the Some Yoshino version that's uh, pickled and put in the confection. It's the pink Kawazu uh, version of it. So they're quite popular down in Odawara. The pickling goes down in Kanagawa a lot of it for the confections. You can see there's some buds. A little bit of green on there. That's a good sign. It's a very good sign. The rain behind it is not such a great sign. And you can see uh, this one, not much, not, nothing on there. Sorry. And they, they, here's the boat where you can catch it from down here, not a soul. And you can wait underneath the canopy here, not a soul. <laughs> it's pretty great. It's pretty, it's pretty awful outside here. This is not going to be a live, a long live stream. I think for this update, the, the proof is in the images. There's really not a lot here. Um, there's a lot going on in Japan and it gives me a chance to talk about that. There were more uh, go-kart, those Tokyo Mario Kart accidents happening. More uh, tourists are starting to, deciding to get out of, in the middle of traffic. They get up out of the go-kart to take pictures and they're leaving it in the middle of traffic. Not only is that dangerous, that's just, that's illegal. And these go-kart companies are going to be in a bind. I don't think they're gonna go out of business. They're not gonna go out of business, but that is not a good, that's not a good look. So if you're gonna ride those go-karts, which we hate here, it's annoying, it's loud. You don't follow the rules and there's accidents. Somebody in 2018 crashed into the side of a, of a store. You know, it's going to be something that's going to be in the news. I might cover this again. Uh, what else is in the news here? A Nissan Cup of Noodles released a mystery meat box of goodies, which will be at the supermarket. I'll see if I can find some of those. A lot of people are fans of the uh, cup noodles. They produce some pretty interesting stuff. They most certainly do. I like this area, Monzen Nakacho. I was told that there is a, um, a local pizza, a New York pizza shop. And uh, we can do a quick walkabout and see if we can find it. Apparently it's, it's towards Eitaibashi, the, uh, the bridge across the Sumida River, which is, this is Eitaidori, so we're gonna make a, a left, see what we can find. There's also a really good bakery that uses um, truffles or something. Usually it's got a, a long line and they're closed on Wednesdays, I believe, so. Wow, this is an awful day. By the way, I, I was interviewed uh, uh, by a couple of people for the latest episode. So there's a, uh, there's a, John Manjiro it has a lot of fans in the world. This episode, I don't know if you've seen it yet. It's on YouTube on my main channel. If you haven't, you know, leave me a comment and uh, let me know what you thought. Manjiro is uh, one of the, one of the uh, uh, historical figures that has really done a huge, played a huge part in modernizing Japan. And this episode on the main channel, it's not doing too well because it's a historical back to one. I think it's more of that than anything else. But I know that if you watch it, you're gonna like it, especially if you're watching Shogun, the drama, um, right now, which is quite popular. That is, this is the bookend to it. Shogun shows the start of the Shogunate, the, um, the end of the warring Sengoku period with Tokugawa Ieyasu is apparently in there. Tokunaga, I believe, might be Tokugawa. I don't know. <laughs> Depends on the book. I think, I think that's the case. But uh, the Tokugawa Shogunate is, is finished when Manjiro comes back, starting to finish because uh, they're opening up. They have to end their, uh, the Sakoku, the uh, period of isolation that they had going on for 220 years. And Manjiro, who was shipwrecked, picked up by an American whaler, schooled in the United States in Fairhaven, came back to Japan and offered that knowledge to the shogunate, which was very valuable 
because they had nobody because they were closed off to the world who really understood or knew much about America except for dun, 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 the story. So definitely watch it. I put a year into it. Um, I was so obsessed with the editing that I didn't actually release a video in January, February, which was dumb. But I wanted to put everything into it. Sometimes you have to really focus in on, on your work, on one work, because that is what you're defined by. Not a bunch of small rinky-dink videos about Japanese cuisine, which you probably would love. This was more defined by, you know, something that is... I don't think anybody else could ever do something like this um, in the way that I did it because it's it doesn't make sense financially time wise it's just you have to be obsessed all right I think that's it over there it is cold I'm drenched the last couple of days I have to admit I was really shy I remember going to the supermarket right after the event and I went to go get my receipt and I had absolutely pitch blue, pitch dark blue hands. And it kind of freaked out the teller. And in these kinds of situations, never act shy. Do the opposite, just smile. And it said, I zome, I was doing indigo dyeing, la 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 la. And then she, she was, uh, I don't think she made any reaction. Just like, oh, okay, whatever. It's still weird. <laughs> The shoes look pretty cool though. I did my homework, I'll, I'll, I'll bring them out in the spring. You get a chance to take a look at them in a few days. Yeah, Angelica writes in here, it matches your jacket. That was my saving, that was the saving aspect of the whole thing. Had I worn a jacket that clashed, my hands would have clashed and would become even more noticeable. It, would, it looked like an extension of the jacket. So when I was walking down Ginza, people did notice it, but they weren't, I think they weren't staring as hard as if I hadn't, uh, had such a, a, a massively clash. Is, is this it here? Is this it? I'm trying to figure out, I haven't been here. So the guy who, who I, there's a food truck. I, I, I make friends usually with everybody um, when I do, when I go to a restaurant or eat food. One of the food truck guys who is, I'm a regular now at his food truck, he told me about this pizza place run by an American or, or something like that. And he said, go, go take a look at it. It's at Monza Nakacho towards Eitaibashi. And uh, I'm gonna just take a look. And if, if it's cool, I might come back and do another episode because everybody, it's New York style pizza and everybody knows, everybody in New York knows that New York style is the best. <laughs> New York. <laughs> Although I have, I, I can't recall ever having Detroit pizza, so I can't say for sure, but. The New York pizza certainly is uh, is quite good. Super Mr. Crazy Man is in the house. Question, people are worried that Japan is becoming anti-tourist where other YouTube videos are applying that it's getting worse. That's a great question. That might be a great episode idea for tomorrow, actually. Um, I did an episode talking about how Kyoto uh, shut down some of the alleys. It's not a big deal. It's just localities where it is way, it, it's not anti-tourist. It's more like tourists, tourists have, international travel has become so cheap and so popular. Maybe the world population's growing. There's so many of them. People have zero, there's like 1% of the travelers that have zero skills and, and uh, they make things very difficult. And Japan is a country where the rules, what makes Japan so great? are that there are these rules that make society safe. You lose your wallet, there's a good chance you're gonna get it back. You know, make society, the, the politeness, you don't have to tip to get really good service. The cuisine is, is some of the best in the world because that, that um, I don't know, focus on, on uh, ingredients, they're these, just the way things work. But when you start taking that away, and this is why the disgruntled English teachers that come here for a year and they, they love Japan at first and find out that that's not what I thought it was going to be and they become very angry people and always hating Japan because it's not run the way that the US is run or another country. 
they don't understand that if it were to change like it was like the way you wanted it to be, it wouldn't be Japan anymore. Thus, all the great stuff that we just loved about Japan would be gone. Now, there has to be some kind of counter to a lot of the tourists wanting Japan to be the way that they want it to be. Like, you can't just go around Kyoto taking pictures and, and sniping the, the, the Michael. They're not going to want to do the job anymore, and that culture is going to die because of they're just uncomfortable. They're going to have to hire bodyguards in their own city. So I, I don't think that that's the case. I'm going to tell you this right now. I've seen a lot of YouTubers that have gone a little bit too far off of the edge, scaring people to get people to click. This is the end of Japan. This is the, it's not going to happen. Japan's going to keep getting bigger and bigger. There'll be a couple of instances where there's some... And this happened before. And there's Eitaibashi. Right there, you can see it, the blue uh, bridge. It's a beautiful bridge. Yeah, it's more or less clickbait. Where they scare you or worry you into just Japan has fallen off the cliff or Japan doesn't want tourists. That's not the case at all. There's some areas and there's some, there's some uh, places, private businesses. Those are private roads in Kyoto and they have every right to do what they did. Which is to fine you. They didn't, they fine you. First of all, you, you, I don't think you can go through there anymore. I'm not sure. I think you can still go there. I think it's more about taking pictures of the geisha, the maiko, and making them feel uncomfortable. You can go to a show! And the shows allow you to... I'm like looking for this place at the side. The shows allow you to uh, take pictures with them, I believe, at the end. Same as when you go to a maid cafe. Nobody wants to get their picture taken by some stranger because you want to take the picture. So, it's like two cents here. That's a thumbnail that gets 200, 800,000 clicks. Could very well be, uh, but if the, the, there's about five or six people, some of them don't even live in Japan, who are doing these uh, update videos, and I don't know, they're a little bit, a little bit clickbaity. Like everybody's got a, a right to make a living off of this. And if you've got an audience and you're connecting with people and they're watching this stuff, then all the power to you. I mean, just, you know, to the best of your ability, you better be telling the best information, the honest information, and not scaring people into um, thinking wrong about Japan. And unless somebody has been living here for, look, I don't think you really even start to understand Japan until you've been here for about 10 years, all right? Because I was confused for the first 15 maybe. So I can't imagine somebody being that much more intelligent to be able to pick stuff up in like three or four years. So if you've been in Japan for three or four years, you don't know anything yet. It just comes from experience, getting knocked down, getting back up. A lot of people don't even want to live here after one year. Oh, here it is. He was right, but it's closed today. All right, this was good scouting. Tony's, Tony's NY. Look at that, he put the NY in Tony. Oh, that's genius. Tony's Pizza, New York Pizza. What? That's so cool. All right, we're gonna be back here. All right, we're gonna come back here. I think it's a, it's a local business. All right, here are the hours. Saturday, Sunday, 12 to 6, or sold out. So they close at 6 p.m., wow. So it's like, a, I guess it's like a lunch place. It feels like YouTubers are just joining the trend. Yeah. One of the reasons, uh, look, I'm at a crossroads as well because there are so many YouTubers that are doing content here in Japan. And I think, was that Michael Sasano that, that chimed in earlier? It, it's nice to see you here, Michael. Sorry I didn't get to, get to it in time. Yeah, Aloha John would love to have the sample, some of that donut just, well, gosh, I'm sending, I'm sending Brandy her box today. Maybe I should put something in there for you. 
Um, like I'm, I'm sort of, I feel like I'm at something somewhat of a crossroad because there are so many YouTubers, so many Japan-based YouTubers, and they just keep increasing and increasing, and they're not adding anything new. Of course, everybody has a right to make a living off of this platform, but you're not adding anything new. You're doing the same stuff that everybody else is doing. If you don't live here in Japan, then maybe it's okay because you have your own version. You're from outside of Japan. But if you're living here in Japan and you're covering the same tired stuff that has been covered a thousand times, not only won't your channel grow, because somebody already did it and did it better than you. Your channel won't grow. You're not gonna connect with an audience because why would anybody watch your content if somebody else who already has an audience did the exact same thing? Why would they watch your video? So if you want to ever break out as a content creator and, and build an audience, you have to pick topics that nobody has ever seen before or from an angle that no one has ever covered something before. And it's not just because it's your angle, it has to be something that's somewhat innovative. Something that makes people go, wow. And look, the travel update stuff that I did during the pandemic was all great and good, but once Japan opened the borders, I don't think you all need to have travel updates every week about traveling to Japan because it's not going to change that much. So I stopped doing them. So, you know, to his and her all their own. But right now I have to pick stories that are going to be different than what everybody else is doing. So I'm not, I didn't do a lot of food last year. I, I'm, I did more about stories and they weren't as popular because I think the audience and YouTube in general loves to have a bunch of food and, and uh, you know, I, I call it low hanging fruit. They're easy topics that would get a lot of views. John Manjiro is not going to get a lot of views. It's not low-hanging fruit. This is the fruit of the top of the tree. And when you discover it, it's something that can be like life-changing because learning about his story, somebody who's kind of lost in their life, and then reading about John Manjiro, it certainly has a deep impact on, on the person. And I, I didn't even know this story for the first 23 years of living in Japan, and I don't even know why. And then when I did learn about the story, I was just so... I just amazed by it, I wanted to cover it. And I, I said, look, in order to do it, you have to do it right. It's gonna take a long time to make this, but you know, I've got a really good group of people on Patreon. Look at that old shop right there. And yeah, I'm doing food videos too, don't worry. <laughs> the next episode is done actually, editing. I'll put it up before the, the weekend and you'll get a chance to see another food episode. It's a Shinjuku night foodie episode going into the restaurants in Shinjuku at night. So don't worry, there's still food coming. It's something that's so, somewhat unique, but for the most part though, you want to do stuff that's different than what other YouTube creators are doing and everybody, it just seems like it's the same old stuff. And then there's some really great creators that are doing stuff that is completely different. My friend Greg uh, Lamb is always finding a different angle. Than, he might cover the same topics, but he has a new angle on, on stuff. It's just different, right? You don't do things just to get views. You do things to try to add value to the viewers lives. I want to add something that you learn from, right? So, yeah. Japan is not falling off of a cliff and going anti-tourist just because of one or two situations. If you over, I don't know, if you drag one instance so deeply, you could find tons of problems I, I suppose, but it's not the case. They're just random isolated incidences and it's all going to uh, be okay. Japan is still one of the most welcoming countries in the world. Some of the best hospitality. There is 125 million people in Japan. It's a pretty big country. I think there's 40 million in Canada. Canada is a big country with space and actually Canada is a very friendly country too. Okay. But Japan's 125 million people in the space of, of uh, the size of California and you would think there'd be a lot more stress and people would be stressed out all the time because of how crowded it is, but it's, it's okay. You get really good service, you get great food, and I think that that hospitality is a reason why people come back. There's a lot of repeaters. Hey, there's a fire department. Keep up the good work, guys. 
and gals too. We got some some uh, really strong uh, uh, ladies in the fire department. Got a chance to talk with a couple of them the other day. Leo loves fire trucks, so. I'm looking at, at this. Uh, so I was gonna meet up with Peter, but the weather's not too good. To, uh, so we're gonna do that maybe uh, next week with, with the cherry blossoms around. Uh, Peter's working on, of course, another motor show, which is so good. He's really good at doing those um, motor show overviews. If you haven't seen his channel lately, I mean, he's got a cameraman, really good production, and I'm really happy uh, that I was able to get him to start on YouTube because he's so talented in so many different ways more than just YouTube, but uh, you know, everybody knows his voice, but he's now very creative and this is, has been an amazing outlet for him. So we'll get back together, the duo, dynamic duo. I'm Batman, he's Robin. Cause, Cause he's not here right now. Sort of the way it is. Carrie, thank you for that. And the midnight snack runs, because I've been sort of dieting, I haven't really been going out at midnight. It's not a good idea to eat at midnight, but it doesn't mean I can't do a snack run once in a while. So when the weather warms up like soon, maybe I'll do a couple of them. Um, I did them a lot when I was living in my old place years ago, but it's been a while. I always mean to do them, but it, it's just not a healthy thing. I, I don't want to eat after 7.30 p.m. anymore, so. The older you get, the more you, your diet should change. Doesn't always, but it, mine did before I turned that magical number, and now I'm more used to uh, intermittent fasting, where I don't eat between like like one and s seven, something like that. I try. I'm pretty pretty strict with it too. What was the channel called? Life where I'm from? Do you mean Greg Lamb's channel? Just write in life, L-W-I-F. It's my friend Greg's channel. He's a, a super awesome creator, a really good guy. And we do collabs every now and then because we have so much fun when we're just hanging out, talking, shooting the breeze. <laughs> I, don't do, I don't do live streams. I'll, I'll meet up with YouTubers sometimes and I have no, no desire to do a collaboration. Just to talk is enough for me. There's a lot of people that want to, you know, every time I meet with a YouTuber, a, a smaller one, like, oh, we got to do a collab because I'm like, nah, you know what? Why don't I learn who you are first as a person before I want to link my, my material with you? Let's get to, let me get to know you a little bit before I decide to do something like that. Maybe we have nothing in common and this would be a complete disaster. But there's some people that are, are just really good friends and you like to hang out and you have stuff that's in, in common to talk about. And then, you know, with YouTube, you, you kind of get it and you kind of, and there's people who just kind of don't. And collabs don't actually help you. Uh, they might be, uh, make, help you a little bit, but in the end, it's all about you and your content and how you made it, how you make your content work for your audience, not about trying to get somebody else's audiences. This is Matsuya. That's, I think that's Kanai's favorite one, the Negi Butadon. That looks really good and it smells pretty good out here too. Ooh. I love the ja Japanese chains always have uh, seasonal menus. So, so every couple of months they'll have these new dishes that keeps their menu fresh. I love that. I wish more companies did that abroad. I, maybe they do. I've been here for so long, I, I can't really compare. Look, the Famichiki. Famichiki on the poster here. Many people say that Famichiki won, but I gotta tell you, 7-Eleven really upped their game when I compared the two. And F Fam Family Mart has um, a Baskin Robbins macaron campaign going on, so they're really innovating some stuff there. They used to be so far behind 7-Eleven, uh, but they've caught up pretty good. Lawson's is still kind of far behind. Some people might disagree, but Lawson certainly is not. Uh, not even close to Family Mart and, and uh, 7-Eleven in terms of quality of food, but they're catching up a little bit. But they had a long way to go.
Uh, here's the Mr. Donuts that I got my uh, donuts from. So I, I, I can end right here by showing you a little bit about Monza Nakacho. This is a great place for budget hotels. It's, it's a little bit cheaper than the center, but you're so close to Tokyo Station. You're really close to the center. The station's on the Oedo line, and it's also on the Tozai line, which cuts across, going towards Takara no Baba and Ikebukuro Shinjuku in this direction. So it's pretty convenient, and the Oedo line goes around the entire city. It's a good place to stay. Lots of night, night, um, nightlife. There's some alleys here. Showa era. It feels like you're going back in time. The uh, Fukugawa, Fukugawa Fudodo Temple is so scenic. It's really nice. And there's the uh, um, Hachimangu Shrine uh, as well. So this has a kind of that traditional Kyoto feel to it, as well as the Showa era drinking establishments, which is kind of fun. You have some um, businesses under the bridge here. There's some really amazing bakeries. And along the road here, you have some, some really high-grade uh, high restaurants at good prices. There's a Hotel Lynx. There's one hotel here. And then, of course, you have the Sakura Cherry Blossoms at the parks here. You could follow along the river where we went for the update. And yeah, not so much there. And then you have the Eitaibashi, which is just uh, um, a really beautiful place, and you can walk along the river and, and check it out. The Tokyo Cont Museum of Contemporary Art is here, Basho Museum, um, and then there's the coffee town, Kiyosumi Shirakawa. I did a live stream here about three months ago. You want to check that out? This is the coffee town of Tokyo. It is amazing. Just, uh, especially if you like coffee, lots of bakery, boutique uh, uh, cafes and things like that. It's got a good vibe to it that's completely different and there's not a lot of tourists, which makes it ideal. I dyed my shoes, that's why this is like here. It freaked out Leo for like a good two days too because my entire hands look like I had gloves on. He goes, Daddy, why are your hands blue? And I said, because I'm the blue Oni. Ah! And then it made him cry and then kind of got angry and I apologized. I said, I'm not the blue Oni, but I am. And he cried again. It'll go away, I bet you it's gone in about um, 72 hours, a little bit more, you hardly know. But doesn't it look like I painted my nails? It's kind of cool. I'm the blue Oni. It's kind of really freaked him out. He's still, he's still just three, you know? I mean, he's just three. All right, that's all I got from Monza Nakacho. I hope that you uh, uh, enjoy this live stream in the rain, a little chance to hang out. I'll try to be back tomorrow. Um, the trade blossoms are going to take a couple of days, so I have to find something else to talk about and maybe this anti-tourist Japan talk maybe a little bit deeper and I'll pull up some news articles uh, as we go into it because I think I get to push back on some of the tourists that might be going a little bit too far, but I don't know. Maybe the answer is somewhere in between. Maybe I'm too lenient because I really love this place and the people. Maybe they're... Maybe they're closer to this. I, I'll do some research on this, but until then, I'll see you. Matane. Stay dry, everybody. Oh, and, and uh, Mr. Donut said they're going to get uh, intense matcha donuts coming in a few days. Intense matcha. I don't even know what that means. I think it's so deep, so bitter, so green that it'll blow you away. So I got to come back here and try their intense matcha stuff. Got to give them credit. They make some interesting... Interesting donuts. Matane. Oh, go check out that video on Monjiro.